Hello and welcome to this very special episode of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. I'm TTD and in this video I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes and giving you a little bit of an insight into the design process of the big rubber guys. In particular our focus of this video is going to be the Bulldogs, Davy Boy Smith and Dynamite Kid. These are the prototypes and we'll be revisiting them later in the video but right now as of recording you can pre-order the actual figures. They're on majorpodmerch.com and they're available to pre-order only until December the 22nd, 2023. So if you want these figures, and I'd suggest that you do, you wanna pre-order those now. So when it comes to the talent in Big Rubber Guys, Matt, Brian and Kanik will make the decisions around who we want for the line. Bearing in mind, um, we want to ensure that the Big Rubber Guys line is a continuation of the LJNs of the 80s. So we're looking for people around that mid to late 80s kind of era. And people that either LJN missed or that we think would have been picked up had the line continued. Uh, so when we've identified the talent and ensured that they're available, Matt and Brian and Canick will work with the talent themselves or the estate of the talent uh, to sign the contracts, etc. And then we'll get the release schedule and determine whereabouts in the year we're going to release the figures. At the appropriate point then, the design will start. And that's where I come in. The first step in the design process is very much research. So Matt, Brian, Kanik might already have an idea of the gear that we want the talent to be depicted in, in the figure, but we have to do some research for my purposes as a designer, but also for the 3D sculptor to make sure that we've got good reference shots of the front and back of the gear and the talent, because we want to make sure that we can get the gear, whether it's tights, jacket, trunks, boots, knee pads, as accurate as possible, um, and the look of the talent, including the hair, etc., uh, as accurate as possible for the era. We know that with big rubber guys, and, and certainly with major bendies, we don't necessarily take every detail from the gear and put it into the figure because aesthetically that might not work. Sometimes you do have to simplify things but however much you decide to simplify something for the sake of the final figure, it still needs to be accurate. Uh, so the first step is to go off and do some research. It might be looking through galleries online. It might be looking through magazines, and I've certainly got a wealth of magazines that I'll use and refer to uh, for all the figures that I work on. Um, and if we struggle to find images, it might be that I go away and watch some or look for some matches or promo of the guys so I can get stills of, of usually the back of the gear and the boots and things that don't always show up in studio shots or, or match photos. If we absolutely, or if I absolutely can't find the reference shots that I need, I'll go to D Freedom. D Freedom is a magician. He will go away. Um, and come back with a load of shots that for the most part the rest of us have never even seen before because like I said he's an absolute magician and I don't know how he does what he does but a big shout out to D Freedom because he's helped us out so much with so many different figures. Once we've got the gear depicted it's onto the pose and determining what pose we want the guys to have. Again we want to we want it to be in keeping with LJNs and we want our figures to look like an LJN, although we don't want to just reuse all the LJN poses. Sometimes, uh, you may have noticed with Big Rubber Guys, we'll create new poses. We have with the Bulldogs. Um, but these should very much look and feel like LJN poses, whilst also being representative of uh, a pose that the talent would strike. I think that's really important that the, not only do the figures look um, and feel uh, like the, the, the gear is accurate, etc., but also that the pose on the figure makes sense for that talent. 
Once we've got that, the next step then is to put pencil to paper and to start to come up with concepts. So I might do uh, a couple of rough sketches first of all of how I think the pose and the figure might look and I'll share that with the guys. And once they give the thumbs up, I'll turn that into a more detailed um, piece of art, which may also include uh, the front and back of the figure. Once we've, got the, uh, once we've got the drawings in place and agreed for the Bulldogs, the next step is to uh, agree the colours. We can't just say to the factory we want red, blue and skin tone. We want more control than that. So what we have to do, or what I do, is go through and identify the Pantone colours. So these are the colours that are used in manufacturing. So these are accurately depicted manufacturing colours and I can go through these Pantone swatches and determine actually which shade of blue should we use. Now bear in mind it can be quite tricky because you might look at reference photos and depending on the lighting of the picture the gear might look slightly different uh, a slightly different shade of blue for example in one picture to the next but you work out what you think is right based on as many different reference photos as you can get your hands on and, and studio shots are great for getting accurate gear but once you've got all those use the Pantone colors and color the figure and this is what they look like so here you can see uh, the front back and side view of the figures and the Pantone colours that we've selected to be used on the figure. Once that's done, the next step is to give these input drawings to one of our 3D sculpt sculptors. Uh, and we're very blessed uh, with Major Bendies and Big Rubber Guys to work with some awesome sculptors. Uh, in particular for the Bulldogs, uh, Brian Beatty sculpted these for us, um, does absolutely fantastic work. Check him out, Creation Crib uh, on Instagram and social media. Works for a wealth of well-known companies and has designed some of the coolest toys um, and collectibles I think I've ever seen. Uh, so fantastic to be working with Brian. But these are the renders that Brian then sent through for the, for the Bulldog. So he sculpted them in 3D and coloured those for us to give us an idea, uh, a pretty good idea of what the finished product will look like. And I'm sure you'll agree, these look absolutely fantastic. When that's done, they're sent off to the factory. We don't have to wait too long because Canik does uh, an incredible job at managing the relationship with the factory um, and ensuring that those communication lines are open and anything that comes back from the factory is swiftly dealt with. So we generally have prototypes in hand at a pace which I'm incredibly surprised at. We can have prototypes in hand, certainly in weeks, sometimes days from, from when the 3D sculpts are sent off. But the first step is very much that the factory will create a resin sculpt well, we'll create a, a resin figure based off the 3D sculpt that's sent to them. Uh, they will paint that up, they'll hand paint that and send us some photos. They will then send us the resin prototypes. So here's some, uh, some were sent to Canik as well. Once we have these in hand, we'll go through, uh, analyze them compared to the original input um, and check for any potential issues. So whether there's an issue with the scale, with the color. Now bear in mind, and I know some people will notice the skin tone looks a little different on these when compared with an LJM. The only reason for that in this instance is because it's the, the paint on resin. It looks ever slightly different. Here's an example of a finished molded big rubber guy, Marty Ginetti. So you can see the difference in skin tone there and the look and feel. Uh, and I think you'll agree actually that our finished big rubber guys are incredibly, incredibly similar to the original LJNs. That's certainly the feedback we've had so far for the figures that are in people's hands. Bear in mind, there's not that many at the moment that are in people's hands. So we've got 
Matt and Brian, uh, and we've got Demolition. But the figures that we've still got that you've already um, seen photos of, so Marty Ginetti, and this is a prototype or other prototype, or one of my personal favorites, this Ric Flair, uh, Macho Man, Andre the Giant, Sergeant Slaughter, all these yet to come, then the Bulldogs, and then an incredible wealth of people that are still in design um, and or planned in for design in 2024. So I think if you're a fan of LJNs or a fan of wrestling in general, these are gonna be some of the hottest ticket items to get because when the pre-order closes on any of them, that's it, they're gone, they're done. Uh, so I would really recommend getting in on these. Um, but anyway, all that aside, so we've got the, uh, we get the prototypes back. We take the photos of the prototypes. We, we do the comparison with, um, with the reference charts and with the design inputs that I've created. Uh, and we feed back on any issues. For example, on the Bulldogs, the Union Jack on the rear of the trunks is supposed to come round to the seam of the tights, which it doesn't. So that's something that's fed back to the factory. Uh, like I said, we look at the scale, all sorts of other things too. Once we've, uh, once we've submitted that, we get some final rubber prototypes in hand. Not got the rubber prototypes yet for the Bulldogs, but I do have for some of the other figures. So again, here's Marty Gennetti um, and Ric Flair. I think you'll agree, like I said, pretty close to the originals, which is great. So expecting to get the, the Bulldogs back fairly soon in this rubber format. Um, once the mold is all signed off and everything like that. We'll do a final quality check on, on the paint with the rubber um, and feedback any issues. We can still feed back to the factory once we get these rubber prototypes. Uh, indeed, for example, with this Marty, the tassels on the boots are pink when actually they should be purple. There's no joins on the zebra stripes here, which there should be. So that's something that's fed back and is being replicated on the final figures. And that's it. The next step is to get the final product. Now, alongside all of this happening, um, we've also been working on the packaging. So I've been doing packaging illustrations and putting the packaging together. I think it's worth noting that for, for big rubber guys, we wanted, we wanted to do something a little bit different and we wanted to give big rubber guys their own identity. I think the layup would have been uh, looking to replicate LJN style packaging. And funnily enough, we've, we've done that with other things in the past. So you may remember uh, this print from 2019, where we captured loads of friends of the podcast in the audience with Matt and Brian in their street clothes or Brian in his street clothes, Matt and his thousand dollar broski suit in the ring with loads of friends of the podcast uh, around it. Very much LJN-esque. Uh, we also did a shirt um, later on, um, which was originally going to go into a store and that changed. So it's available on Pro Wrestling Tees now. Uh, but again, very much LJN kind of inspired. In terms of the packaging um, and that LJN look and feel, there are a number of companies doing that really, really well at the moment, really well. So Mattel's Ultimate Figures do it exceptionally well. You've got it depicted on AEW's tribute to LJN figures. You've got something similar on Mattel's Superstar figures as well. So we thought, let's just do something different, which is completely unique to big rubber guys and effectively sets us up as not just a tribute line and we know it is a continuation of LJNs and, and paying homage to that but we wanted it to be something that's standalone so we've, we've come up with this packaging there are some nice little easter eggs in the crowd there with signs and shirts that people have on um, but something just a bit different and uh, and, and standalone uh, and we've got uh, an illustration of the talent on the front of the packaging there too that is it. 
So at some point in the very near future, early in 2024, at some point in Q1, the Bulldogs will arrive, packaged up, and they will be good to go. At that point, you'll also have your Macho Man and your Andre the Giant in hand if you've ordered those, as well as your Marty Gennetti, Sergeant Slaughter and Ric Flair. And you will have also seen uh, some reveals for at least one, maybe two of the upcoming series. I'm certainly incredibly excited about working on them. As a wrestling figure fan myself, I'm excited about having the final figures in my collection and I hope that you will be too. Thanks so much for joining me on this little adventure today. Please, please, please get some big rock guys. They are awesome. Really awesome. Um, and for those of you who have, thank you so much for the support as always. You're awesome. Thank you. Take care. Until next time. All right, this is Matt Cardona, host of the Major Wrestling Fever Podcast, but also owner of Major Bendy's with Brian Myers. Brian, tell everyone about Major Bendy's, Big Rubber Guys, over on MajorPodMerch.com. MajorPodMerch.com. Get your Major Bendy's. There's that merch table exclusive me. Uh, Big Rubber Guys, sweeping the action figure world by storm. Bro. We have so many major bendies, almost 100 figures. We have legends like Tommy Dreamer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, new guys like Dan Housen, and of course, big rubber guys. It is the throwback to the LJN style. We got Matt and Brian, Demolition, Macho Man, Ric Flair. Keep checking MajorPodMerch.com and scratch that figure itch.